Okay, hello everybody. I'm Vivian Shwaikani. I'll be explaining uh, the session three of chapter seven, which is about the reaction between a weak acid and a strong base. Uh, the objective of this uh, session is to indicate the effect of dilution on VB equivalence or VA equivalence according to the substance that is titrated, whether it's a weak acid or a weak base, at the pH equivalent, at the pH initial, and at the pH of half equivalence during an acid-base titration. You have to choose a convenient color indicator to a given titration. You have to recognize how to prepare a solution containing a weak acid and its conjugate base, which is called the buffer solution. And those, uh, that's it. A after all, there is nothing to be memorized by heart in this chapter because it's something that um, can be everything and it can be derived from a logical thinking based on what you have seen in all the previous chapters. But let's uh, list them uh, for, to be clear enough for you. So effect of adding distilled water to the beaker on the VB uh, equivalence, pH equivalence, pH initial, and pH half equivalence. Here, uh, you have to imagine the experiment, not to imagine, it means you have to figure out that the acid is in the beaker and the base is in the burette. So the base is added drop by drop. So initially we have acid in the burette. Now, during an acid-base titration, we add distilled water in the beaker to immerse the electrode of the pH meter as we did usually. So this is the experiment here. The base is in the burette and the acid is in the beaker. At equivalence, as you can see, there is no more acid in the beaker. There are just the conjugate base. And what would be the effect on VB equivalence? The VB of dilution, it means, or of adding water, as you can see here. When adding water, sorry, here we have to add water. When adding water, the number of moles of HA, which is here, is conserved. So the volume of VB equivalence stays constant because the number of moles required of OH- minus to react with HA will be the same regardless of the volume in which HA are found. As we said, since at, at equivalence, this is what I have said, N of HO minus added from the burette would be equal to the number of moles of HA present in the beaker. So VB equivalence would stay constant and this is something seen previously. Now, what if the effect on pH equivalence? At equivalence, the concentration of the conjugate acid present in the beaker will decrease since the volume of the solution in the beaker increases during dilution. Although the number of mole of A minus stays constant, but its concentration will decrease because, uh, as we said, the medium uh, contains more water. So the medium becomes less basic due to the decrease of A minus. So this is in the case of uh, a weak acid that uh, from which a strong, uh, pardon, a conjugate base derived. So pH equivalence decreases, but it stays basic in this case. While in the case of in case of uh, strong acid, strong base, the pH stays seven. Nothing will change. Now effect on pH initial. In initially in the beaker we had what we had an acid. So upon what, we're adding water to a weak acid, the concentration of H3O plus will decrease, and thus the pH initial will increase because it's an acid. Now what about the effect of pH at half equivalence? At half equivalence, since VE is constant, as we said we said previously, then B, VB half equivalence is constant. So there is nothing, uh, there is no effect of this adding of water on pH. So the pH will still equal to what? To pKa of the couple or of the pair involved. Now, in the same way here, we have just a change to uh, the following, that the base, the weak base after all, is in the beaker and the acid is in the burette. Again, what will happen? when we have to add water, distilled water in the beaker to immerse the electrode, does it have any effect on VA equivalence? No. Why? Because the number of mole of the acid added from the burette will be the same because here we are dealing with number of mole. Thus, the volume VAE is constant and it doesn't change upon adding this water. Now, what is the effect of pH at equivalence? Again, at equivalence, we have the conjugate acid of the weak base the, its concentration will decrease because at uh, in the beaker at equivalence so this is the single species present since not the single species the single species of it that uh, has uh, uh, effect on the medium decreases because we have spectator ion of the strong um, acid used uh, decreases in the volume in the beaker increases during dilution so even the number of mole of it stays constant 
So the PHE increases, but it is still acidic due to the presence of the acid of the conjugate acid of the weak base. Now, what about the effect of adding water on the initial pH? In the initially, the pH uh, is measured. Uh, uh, we have what in the beaker? We have the weak base. So the concentration of HO minus will decrease, and thus the pH will decrease. Do we have any effect on pH at half equivalence? Actually, no, for the same reason, because the volume added at equivalence is constant, so the volume of the half equivalence is constant. So always the pH at half equivalence, even with dilution, doesn't change anything, and it will still equal to pKa of the couple or of the pair um, involved. Now, what about colorimetric titration? When we say colorimetric, we have to remember the word color and the color indicator. We used to study the pH metric titration. Now, what about colorimetric? The principle of colorimetric titration, it means we are titrating an acid by a base or vice versa, but the equivalence point would be detected by the change in color and not by the pH meter. So I repeat, we can determine the volume at equivalence VE during an acid-base titration using a convenient color indicator to the titration. Here, we have a table that shows some color indicators and the corresponding range of color change as seen in the previous lesson. For example, the helium time or helium ton has a range of color change at a pH between 3.1 and 4.1. So this is the range of the color change of pH. For the blomothymol blue, it is the, the, its color, it means the start to change here at 6 to when the pH is equal to 6 or to 7.6. And for the phenolphthalein, it's this one. Now, the convenient indicator to be chosen in a titration is the one whose range, it means here, of color change coincides with the jump of pH that is around pH equivalence at the curve. Let's consider a practical example. When we titrate a strong acid with a strong base, we know that pH as equ at equivalent is equal to, to 7. So, bromothymol blue, brom blue would be the convenient one for this titration, while bromothymol blue might not be convenient, for example, uh, of the titration of a weak acid with a strong base. So, and here is the example I said, I said it already. So, the choice here will be uh, or will depend on the value of the pH at equivalent. Now, what about buffer solutions, the definition of characteristic? To tell you something, the word buffer solution, you will not face it at all in the official exam. It is something that is not required anymore, but it is meaning and its application can still be asked in an exercise with one chain to that. We don't have to mention the word buffer, but we have to work the exercise typically as if uh, this solution exists. What, first of all, what is a buffer solution? Simply, a buffer solution is a solution containing a weak acid with its conjugate base at the same time. So this is not new. When we worked henderson hazel bulk equation, we worked uh, in that condition. Now, according to this definition, what can be deduced? That the second part of the titration curve, definitely when of a weak species with a strong species, it means weak acid with a strong base or vice versa, Containing the half equivalent point represents a buffer solution because at half equivalent, what did we say? We said that we have the acid, the weak acid, and its conjugate base, or the weak base and it is conjugate acid. What are the characteristics of a buffer solution? Why it is important to study a solution containing its weak acid with its conjugate base at the same time? Simply because those solutions have a pH that is almost constant. It varies very slightly upon, upon dilution or upon addition of small quantities of strong acid or strong base. And this is what, you sa what we said when the uh, curve at that uh, point or at that region, uh, the pH varies slightly upon the addition of the uh, substance from the period. Now, how to prepare a buffer solution? Here also, you don't have to memorize anything from the preparation, how to prepare a buffer solution. That's just, here it's something logical derived from what we have seen. There exist actually three ways to prepare a buffer solution. First of all, we can mix a V, a volume V of a weak acid, with the, so with the same volume V of the conjugate base. Definitely, the conjugate base will be in the form of a salt. So here, simply in a beaker, we can get the weak acid and its conjugate base, and this is the definition of the solution. It is the presence of the strong uh, of the weak acid with its conjugate base. 
Now the second method, it is what has been seen, what have been seen at equivalence point. When we mix a volume V of a weak acid of concentration C with a volume V over 2 or around V over 2 of a strong base solution of the same concentration C. As I wrote here, this is the case of the half equivalence point during a titration of a weak acid with a strong base. Because what did we see? We have a volume V in the beaker and we have added V over 2 from the burette. So in the beaker, we will have half of the volume of the acid initially present and half of its conjugate base. And this is what did we call point of half equivalence. Here it is the same, but instead of having the weak acid in the beaker, the weak base will be in the beaker and the acid will be added from the burette. Again, those not to be memorized, you have just to understand them and it's not something new, it is based on the uh, study of the curve uh, in the chapter, in the previous chapter. Now here there is an application. This is an application that you can be asked about, as I said, without mentioning anything about the word buffer. Look here, during the titration of ethanoic acid solution, which is a weak acid, having a given concentration, we pour in the beaker where the acid is found a volume VB of sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base of concentration CB, such that VB uh, is equal to VB equivalence over 2. It's 10 milliliters, so we are what? On the half equivalence point. What is the, the, the instruction here or the question? You have to calculate the number of mole of sodium hydroxide and that of the ethanoic acid introduced. Don't forget that this is what? A titration reaction. So it is a complete one. So here, typical, the number of sodium uh, introduced simply CB times VB according to the volume is introduced. And this is what is the number of uh, mole of uh, NaOH. And this is the number of mole of ethanoic as you can see here, the number is double of this one because we intend to reach the half equivalence without even mentioning it. The second question is to determine the number of mole of ethanoate ions formed as well as the number of mole of ethanoic remaining in the reactional medium. Here also, it is the same table uh, drawn in chapter in this chapter in the previous session. This is the initial state. Don't forget, even we are drawing a table here. It is what? It is a complete reaction. It is not an equilibrium one. It means a reversible one where we reached equilibrium. But we are drawing this table for the amount of species present at a different instant to be clear, not more. So at the initial state, we have this as given in the exercise. And this is the number of mole added of OH minus. Those will react together in a total way, this is the limiting one, as you can see. So this is what stays here. The remaining would be one times 10 to the power minus four, and this is the conjugate base. So at the end, what do we have? The acid, which is weak, and its conjugate base. So what, how to calculate the pH now? This is what I have. Deduce the value of the pH in this point. Definitely, we have to apply hundreds and hazel bulk because it is the case of a solution containing the acid and its weak base. We have the number of mole according to the table. We will divide it by V total that will be eliminated. So this is the pH. If the number of mole is exactly equal, the pH will be typically equal to pKa. If not, it, be, it will be a little bit different here. It is the typical of the half equivalent. So pH is exactly equal to pKa. Now you have to solve the numbers 5, 7, 8, and 9, and 10 to page 186, 187 on the textbook as direct application. And I will thank you for, watch, for watching our lesson this end. Thank you.